Hello, my name is Robert McMurr. And based on my experience as a former homeless person that was in Los Angeles, I spent roughly a decade in Los Angeles homeless. I did not have a drug out problem. I did not have an alcohol problem. The resources is kind of specific. Like do they have all these AA houses and everything else for people who has an alcohol drug problem. And they have companies like San Fernando Valley Mental Health. But to be with that company, you have to take a load of drugs from them and this really not a solution for someone who does have a mental health problem that is not connected to some other problem like alcohol or drugs. So what I am suggesting that will help mostly bigger cities like Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago is go off of a mental health teal program that can help people with mental health disabilities that don't have an alcohol disability or a drug disability get off the streets. I prefer to be homeless because I did not trust the shelters. Um, like one, one shelter downtown, they made everyone shower together and it was a big room for bunk beds and most shelters are like that. So just a, one big room filled with a bunch of different beds. And I just don't feel comfortable like many other with a bunch of strangers. And uh, yeah, so I prefer just to sleep in a, next to a bus, next to the 134 freeway. Or later on, prefer to sleep in a car or SUV in random spots throughout Los Angeles because I felt safer than I ever did in a shelter. And like I said, to get housing with like a company with Seven and Valley Mental Health. And a lot of the time, like I took their drugs and they still had trouble finding me someplace to live. Apparently I was part of a two year program, but I was in the program for 10 years. What I think they did was just restart my case every two years so they could be my payee. Um, yeah, basically, when I was starting out homeless, I was put on SSI, SSDI for my disabilities. And they was taking a large sum of the monthly checks out for themselves, even though I was uh, living outside and was trying to get into some place like one of their homes or wherever or transitional houses and I barely got and yeah they barely barely give me anything at all uh they claim it was for my medication or they claim it's for like the little clubhouse and everything and yeah basically um uh, I was lucky to get anything. But what I'm getting to is if a person has a mental disability and not does not is not alcoholic or a drug addict, then they could go into a uh, disability home with just like an AA home where you get room and a in AA and NA, you have to go to meetings. There are so many meetings while you are there. You just have to go with to see a caseworker or a therapist while you're in one of these homes and like get a little paper sign saying, yes, you did see this caseworker or this therapist. And if you are a low risk person, like you're not risk to yourself or others, and you personally do not want to take meds, then okay, as long as you're going visiting with your therapist or counselor, then okay. And um, yeah, 
and I think this will work out. But if you are, let's say, higher risk, like maybe you have bonnet outburst or you need medication, then you go into like another level, like level two or level three, depending on the risk factor of you harming someone else or yourself um, or you need meds but you have a history of not going on meds then you go to another house or facility that will help you make sure you take your meds and stay on your meds and um, it will go by like and people with disabilities in one of these houses, if they want to work and feel like they can work, they could take different programs and talk to different people about getting a job to do. I remember at San Fernando Valley, I tried to talk with bon this lady by the name of Bonnie who did employment and she kept talking me out of working because it would affect my SSI, SSDI. Well, that Dell program took most of the money from those checks from every month and she refused to help me. Yeah, but uh, like, let's take myself as the example. Oh, we will, just, we will go through a list, see what I, what someone like me can do, cannot do, what if we have ticks, what are they, and how to maybe overcome them. So let's, when I was in my teenage years or 20 years, I had trouble handling paper, especially money. Uh, the best way to describe it is when I held money, it felt like nails on a chalkboard. I overcame it by biting my tongue or doing something else that caused me a little bit of pain to get my mind off the feeling. And I also got the nail on the chalkboard when I used the broom on a uh, on the floor. And again, I slowly overcame that by mostly biting my tongue. But I don't suggest that for anyone. So let's say someone with middle disability and they have that problem. Okay, try to find a job where they don't handle a lot of paper or money and, and maybe not sleep. Maybe um, they could be a stalker or something or a driver if they are able to drive, that is. And uh, just go down the list. If they have trouble communicating like I do, and I still do, maybe find something that is not customer service related. Like maybe they have little, some coworkers or maybe no coworkers and where they don't get stressed out because a lot of unknown factors, as I call them, and um, yeah, this uh, and then try to mess like wherever they put down with possible jobs and maybe find companies that will let this person at least slowly work in this job, maybe part time or something, work in this job to see how they do. And if they like it, maybe turn part-time and full-time. And if they really like it, maybe they could get off of SSI or SSDI and maybe get to a uh, their own little apartment or something. In these houses, let's say a person with a mental disability is in one of these houses, they get a job, but it's a night job, like let's say, uh, a night security guard or a night stalker. One or two things. A, they might get a room to themselves so they can sleep in the daytime. Or if there's another person there that also has a night job, 
they will be held together so that way they can sleep during the daytime and go to work at night. And like AA houses, they will have chores to do, like um, cooking, cleaning, depending on the ticks and disabilities, like select people might not be able to do some chores so they would be find other chores that they might be able to do and the person that is running the house should be someone that has a background with people working with people that has mental disabilities and knows what to do how to do it and who to call if something happens I feel that these houses, so also like if a counselor suggests to go to events or get outside of your comfort shell, then you have to go to so many functions within the year, depending on where you are. If you are in the middle of nowhere or the house hardly nothing, you can't help with that. But if you're like, let's say New York, Los Angeles, then you have to look for a, places or free events and go there and maybe keep some type of a journal about what happened. It's not easy for homeless people to trust, to trust others. I, me, myself, I was harassed and picked on by the police department in Los Angeles, like sleeping in my S Ford Explorer, I would sometime uh, get woken up by the police, like at two or three in the morning, and they will go through everything, throw stuff on the ground outside, maybe break a 19 inch TV that I had, and when they find nothing, they said, they'll just tell me, they'll see me again later, and I will end up finding a new place to park for the next several nights until the cycle happens again. So we need to find safe, reliable places and have more options for people. And with, as far as I'm concerned, with companies like San Fernando Valley Mental Health, we should give them money to help improve people's lives and not just give them money if their client is on a bunch of drugs. Because the medications, at least to me, did a lot more harm than good. And after I eventually left Los Angeles, after I went several weeks off of medications and my mind finally got cl clear or semi-clear, I left Los Angeles. I stayed a couple of years in Texas where I did see a counselor for a short time, even though I was living in a nice little apartment. And, um, when she looked at the medication list, most of those medications I should not have been on um, because I did not have I, because I did not have what those medications was prescribed for, and some of those medications were for people who was in like, double my age, basically, and. She was just sucked at the list, and I'm still on no medications, and I'm, my life is slowly getting better. I believe there is a solution, and I believe if to help promote stuff like this, uh, get a community center type of place, for people that live on the streets or live in their vehicles where they can hang out, especially in the daytime when it's either 
very hot or very cold outside. They don't have to sleep there. They could just go there, hang out, sit down, maybe talk with each other and be just a clubhouse with like pamphlets and other information about possible living solutions for them. If someone with a mental disability prefers, that is able to drive, prefer to live in a car or other vehicle, I believe some type of park, I believe one or two things. A, have a nice size parking structure that could accommodate that these vehicles could park at and maybe a little community center from an old office or something where they could go in, maybe take some type of shower and relax and maybe hang out, get to know each other. Or mark, or mark several small parking lots as safe places for them where that is has is littered up and has reasonably good security system or a parking or the other option is a few different parking areas where they could spread out a little bit maybe uh let's say take a old supermarket park that supermarket that is no longer open it's just an empty building that has a decent sized parking lot and give them the option to either sleep in the building or sleep with the in the vehicles like uh if it's the middle of winter or the middle of summer maybe let them go inside the building and sleep and maybe and Maybe check on the vehicles from time to time to make so they know the vehicle is still there and because that's everything they own and that's what they care about the most. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please continue watching my videos and subscribe.